Hi, my name's Joan Walsh. I'm the Mass Audubon Bertrand Chair for Field Ornithology. Welcome to our second edition of Bird of the Day, or pretty close to each day. During this time when we're working at home, we wanted to find a way to share nature with you, and this is one of our tools. Today we're going to be exploring a famous Massachusetts ornithologist, as well as the bird she studied, the dapper song sparrow. The song sparrow is the most frequently encountered sparrow in Massachusetts and one you want to get familiar with. A brown cap, a lovely gray and brown stripes on the side of the head, a streaked back, a breast streaked halfway down with a blackish spot in the center of the chest. This bird and its song are more common than Dunkin' Donuts in the state of Massachusetts. Song sparrows are birds of river edges, fields, suburban yards, and parks. Actually, you can find them in almost any habitat. Couple that with a massive range and you get a highly adaptable and variable species. Across this range, there are more than 20 recognized subspecies of song sparrow, each slightly different. The wide range and variation makes song sparrow one of the more well-studied birds in North America and the pioneer of song sparrow research. Indeed, many would say one of the world's pioneers of behavioral research of animals was Massachusetts native Margaret Morse Nice. Margaret was born in Amherst in 1883 and attended Mount Holyoke for her BA and Clark University for her master's. At Clark, she was one of only two women graduate students. She married a fellow grad student at Clark, moved to Oklahoma, but then returned to Clark to complete her master's degree using data she had collected six years earlier on the food habits of Bob White's. While in Oklahoma, she stayed engaged in research, much of it on the development of her own five children, but also continued to study birds. She published widely during this period in bird lore, condor, using species as varied as morning dove to Swainson's hawk. During her life, she continued to publish works of bird behavior, life history, and conservation. And at the time of her death in 1974, it was estimated that she'd published 250 papers in scientific journals and seven book-length manuscripts. The most important of those remains her monograph on song sparrows. Margaret's two volumes, Studies in the Life History of the Song Sparrow, is nothing short of a marvel. Her interest in animal behavior, her meticulous and rigorous scientific approach, earned her high praise from the company of Ernst Meyer and Con Lorenz. Her work, which for eight years focused on color-banded song sparrows near her home in Ohio, rewrote most of the current knowledge about the species and, importantly, how to conduct field research. The monograph was all-encompassing. She documented everything about these birds year-round. This sparked generations of researchers to follow in her footsteps and launched modern field research in animal behavior, ecology, and life history studies. This work, along with her other publications, earned her a Life Fellow status in the AOU, as well as the highest award given to ornithologists, the Brewster Award. Fittingly, Bob Dickerman named a subspecies of song sparrow after her. Well, thanks for joining us today. I just wanted to close with the words of Maya Angelou, who wrote in a poem, a bird doesn't sing because it has an answer. A bird sings because it has a song. And I'd like to thank Margaret Morse Nice from across the Connecticut River and across the generations for her singing her song, which led so many of us to finding our way through science to understand birds and conservation. So if you've enjoyed this, please put some comments down below. If you have photographs of song sparrows that you want to share, we'd love to have them. If you've got kids at home, it would be awesome if they wanted to write a poem about song sparrows and post that below. Whatever. We're glad you're joining us and stay healthy.